At exactly 7.07 in the morning, on a quiet Saturday morning, the ground beneath the sea near Sarangani Island in Davao Occidental trembled with the force of a magnitude 6.9 earthquake. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, FIVOLX, confirmed the event, tracing the epicenter roughly 98 kilometers southeast of Sarangani Island. After a few minutes, it is downgraded to 6.4, then to 6.1, though maybe it will go up or down again. The quake struck from a shallow depth of just 10 kilometers, 6 miles, and was triggered by tectonic movements deep within the Earth's crust. But this wasn't just another tremor. It struck dangerously close to the Philippine Trench, one of the most volatile subduction zones on Earth. For decades, scientists have warned that this trench holds the potential for devastating megathrust earthquakes, the kind that reshape coastlines and rewrite history. Now, with this powerful quake erupting near its edge, many are asking the same question. Is this a warning shot from the deep? Could a larger, more catastrophic event be looming just beneath our feet? What's happening under the Philippine Trench may be more urgent than we ever dared to believe. Communities across the region felt the shock. In Malungon, Sarangani, the shaking reached Intensity 5, strong enough to startle residents and shake unsecured objects. Intensity before tremors were experienced in Kiamba and General Santos City, while gentler yet still perceptible shaking at Intensity 3 was reported across a wide area, from Magsaysay and Davao City to Matanao in Davao del Sur, Don Marcelino in Davao Occidental, Nabunturan in Davao de Oro, Gingug City in Misamis Oriental, several towns in Sarangani, including Masim, Glan, and Maitum, and parts of South Cotabato and Sultan Kudarat, such as Taboli, Surala, Banga, Coronadal, and Lambayong. Though no tsunami threat was raised, the quake served as a powerful reminder of the region's vulnerability to seismic activity and the silent forces constantly shaping the Philippine archipelago beneath our feet. Hidden under the breathtaking landscapes of the Philippine archipelago is a world in motion, a realm where colossal geological forces clash in silence and unleash chaos without warning. Deep within the Earth's crust and far below the waves, tectonic plates are locked in an unending battle, sculpting islands, forging trenches, and sparking the powerful earthquakes and volcanic eruptions that mark this volatile region. To uncover why the Philippines stands among the most geologically active places on the planet, we must delve into the intricate and evolving story of the Philippine Sea Plate. The Philippine Sea Plate occupies a uniquely volatile position in Earth's tectonic puzzle. Surrounded by three of the planet's major tectonic players, the massive Pacific Plate to the east, the vast Eurasian Plate to the northwest, and the smaller but still influential Sunda Plate to the west and southwest, it lies at a dynamic and perilous intersection where the forces of Earth's crust are constantly in flux. But what sets this plate apart from many others is the nature of its boundaries. Nearly every edge of the Philippine Sea Plate is a zone of tectonic convergence. In these regions, crustal plates are not drifting apart or sliding past one another gently. They are colliding, descending, deforming, and at times violently fracturing the Earth's surface. To the east of the Philippine Sea Plate, the Pacific Plate plunges into the Earth's mantle in a dramatic display of subduction. This process forms the Izubonin, Mariana, and Yap trenches, some of the deepest and most formidable chasms on the ocean floor. These trenches, which stretch for more than 3,000 kilometers, 1,864 miles, represent more than just deep sea geography. They are the scars of an ancient and ongoing battle between plates. As the Pacific plate is forced beneath the Philippine sea plate, the immense pressure and friction generate a zone of high seismic activity. Earthquakes in this region routinely extend to depths exceeding 600 kilometers, 373 miles, a testament to the sheer force at work beneath the surface. And yet, paradoxically, despite the scale of this subduction zone and the intensity of the forces involved, it has produced relatively few catastrophic megathrust earthquakes, those with magnitudes greater than 8.0. This apparent contradiction is believed to stem from weak mechanical coupling at the plate interface. Rather than locking tightly and storing energy for massive quakes, the plates may be slipping past each other more smoothly, releasing energy in smaller, more frequent bursts. 
But the story doesn't end with subduction. Behind these long arcs of volcanic islands lies another tectonic oddity, zones of back arc extension. In simpler terms, as the Pacific plate subducts beneath the Philippine sea plate and the crust melts to form volcanoes, the area behind these volcanic arcs begins to stretch and thin. This back arc spreading effectively detaches the volcanic island chains from the main body of the Philippine sea plate, creating new seafloor and triggering additional seismic events. These zones of extension not only add complexity to the region's tectonics, but also enhance its instability, making the Philippine sea plate one of the most geologically restless regions on Earth. To the south of the Mariana Arc, the Pacific Plate continues its descent, now beneath the Yap Islands along the Yap Trench. This trench marks yet another point along the extended boundary, where the ocean floor is being devoured and recycled deep within the Earth. As with other segments of the eastern margin, this subduction is responsible for building the distinctive island arcs that fringe the Pacific Basin, a hallmark of the tectonically charged Ring of Fire. Moving north and west, the Philippine Sea Plate itself meets resistance as it begins to subduct beneath the Eurasian Plate. This ongoing convergence manifests in the formation of the Ryukyu Trench and the string of islands known as the Ryukyu Arc, which stretches from southern Japan to the northeastern coast of Taiwan. Just behind the trench lies the Okinawa Trough, a clear sign of continued back arc spreading. Here, too, the plate interactions fuel volcanic activity and earthquake swarms, sometimes generating tsunamis that ripple across the region. At the southern end of this trench system, the complexity intensifies even further. Near Taiwan, the boundary transitions from pure subduction to a zone of arc continent collision. In this tectonic head on collision, the northern tip of the Luzon volcanic arc is smashing into the buoyant continental edge of Eurasia. The result is dramatic, mountain building, faulting and violent quakes that shake the island of Taiwan with alarming regularity. The western edge of the Philippine Sea Plate brings yet another layer of geological intrigue. Here it meets the Sunda Plate along a highly active oblique convergence zone. This collision zone snakes along the western side of the Philippine archipelago from the island of Luzon in the north all the way down to the Celebes Sea in the south. Unlike typical subduction zones where one plate slides beneath another at a steep angle, oblique convergence introduces a horizontal shear component which complicates fault dynamics and leads to the development of strike-slip faults. The Philippine archipelago is particularly unusual in this regard. It is one of the rare regions on Earth where subduction occurs on both sides, east and west, creating a kind of tectonic vice that constantly compresses, stretches and reshapes the land. Threaded through this complex terrain is the Philippine Fault, a massive strike-slip fault system that runs more than 1,200 kilometers through the heart of the islands. This fault is not a relic of the past, but a present and dangerous reality. It has ruptured violently in recorded history, most notably during the 1990 Luzon earthquake, a magnitude 7.6 event that devastated central and northern Luzon. The Philippine Fault continues to pose a major seismic threat today, and it is not alone. Numerous other intra-arc fault systems crisscross the region, including the Cotabato Fault in the south and the Verde Passage, Sibian Sea Fault in the central Philippines. These faults are not dormant, they are active, capable of unleashing powerful earthquakes with little warning. Subduction also continues on both sides of the archipelago. On the eastern side, the Philippine Trench and its northern extension, the East Luzon Trough, mark the zones where the Philippine Sea Plate is diving beneath the islands. The East Luzon Trough is particularly fascinating to geologists because it appears to be a subduction zone in its infancy, a geologic newborn gradually taking shape as the trench system extends northward. On the western side, the Sunda Plate subducts eastward beneath the Philippines along several trenches the Manila Trench in the north, the less developed Negros Trench in the Visayas, and the Sulu and Cotabato Trenches further south. Each of these trenches contributes to the seismic activity that makes the Philippines one of the most earthquake-prone nations on the planet. 
At the northern and southern ends of these trench systems, subduction gives way once again to arc continent collisions. In the north, the Manila Trench is truncated by the collision between Luzon and Taiwan, while in the south, a similar collision is occurring between the Sulu Borneo block and Luzon at the island of Mindoro. These zones of collision are tectonic bottlenecks where crustal material is crushed, uplifted, and deformed in ways that generate both beauty and danger. Over the past century, the shifting boundaries of the Philippine Sea Plate have unleashed some of the most destructive earthquakes in recorded history. These massive seismic events were not random occurrences, but rather the result of deep geological forces at play, where immense tectonic plates grind, collide, and slip past one another. The Philippine Sea Plate is surrounded by active subduction zones, where one plate dives beneath another, generating stress over time. When that stress becomes too great, it is released in sudden violent ruptures along fault lines. Seven of these ruptures across Japan, Taiwan and the Philippines stand out for their extraordinary magnitude and devastating consequences. Each was driven by a unique tectonic mechanism and fault system, offering insights into the complex and dangerous geology of the region. The Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923 struck near the Sagami Trough, a subduction zone where the Philippine Sea Plate is being forced beneath the Eurasian Plate. This earthquake, estimated to be between magnitude 7.9 and 8.2, was caused by a rupture along the interface between these two plates. The fault movement was a classic mega-thrust event, a type of earthquake known for its high magnitude and wide impact. As the Philippine Sea Plate pushed deeper under Honshu, stress built up until it ruptured, releasing energy that tore through Tokyo and Yokohama. The vertical and horizontal shaking, combined with flammable wooden structures, led to uncontrollable fires that contributed to the enormous death toll. In 1948, the Fukui earthquake originated within the crust of the Eurasian plate rather than along a plate boundary. It was caused by reverse faulting along the Fukui fault zone, a segment of the larger Wakasa Bay seismic zone in central Japan. Although smaller in magnitude at 7.1, the quake was shallow and centred directly beneath a densely populated area. The reverse faulting mechanism, where one block of earth is thrust upward over another, amplified ground shaking and led to the collapse of hundreds of structures. Because it occurred inland and near the surface, the energy was intensely focused on Fukui City, leading to widespread devastation. The 1995 Kobe earthquake, officially known as the Great Hanshin Awaji earthquake, was a stark reminder of the power of strike-slip faults. This event occurred on the Nojima Fault, part of the larger median tectonic line, one of Japan's longest and most active fault systems. The magnitude 6.9 quake was a right lateral strike-slip event, meaning the two sides of the fault slid past each other horizontally. This horizontal displacement caused violent shaking in the Kobe area, where urban infrastructure failed catastrophically. Unlike the megathrust earthquakes associated with subduction zones, this event originated within the crust of the Eurasian plate, demonstrating the complexity of Japan's fault network. In Taiwan, the 1935 Utsinchu Taichung earthquake was the result of fault movement along the northern segment of the Shitan and Tunzuchiao faults in central Taiwan. These faults are part of a complex network formed by the ongoing collision between the Philippine Sea Plate and the Eurasian Plate. The event, estimated at magnitude 7.1, involved thrust faulting that lifted the land abruptly, damaging towns built atop loose sediments that amplified the shaking. The fault rupture was relatively shallow, which made the ground motion especially severe in populated areas. Decades later, Taiwan was again rocked by a major quake, the 1999 Chichi earthquake, one of the most thoroughly studied in the region. It occurred along the Chelungpu Fault, a well-known thrust fault. This magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake involved a spectacular surface rupture over 85 kilometers long. The hanging wall thrust upward by as much as 8 meters, displacing roads, buildings and entire hillsides. The fault movement was directly linked to the collision zone where the Philippine Sea Plate is subducting under Taiwan. This event caused over 2,400 deaths and advanced scientific understanding of active faulting. 
In the Philippines, the 1976 Moro Gulf earthquake was caused by movement along the Cotabato Trench, a subduction zone where the Celebes sea plate is sliding. This magnitude 7.6 earthquake was a classic megathrust event. It ruptured the plate boundary beneath the Sulu and Mindanao seas, displacing the sea floor and generating a devastating tsunami that struck coastal areas in the dead of night. The tsunami drowned entire communities, contributing to the majority of the 8,000 recorded deaths. The 1990 Luzon earthquake also measured magnitude 7.6 and was the result of activity along the Dig Dig segment of the Philippine Fault Zone, a major left lateral strike slip fault. This inland fault rupture stretched over 125 kilometers and was accompanied by complex ground deformation. In areas like Baguio and Cabanatuan, the quake caused widespread building collapse, while in the coastal plains of Dagupan, liquefaction turned stable ground into a semi-liquid slurry, swallowing roads and buildings. The Philippine faults movement was triggered by tectonic compression between the Philippine Sea Plate and the Sunda Plate. Each of these seven earthquakes reveals different faces of tectonic violence, megathrusts, strike-slip faults, and reverse faulting, but also serves as a painful chapter in human resilience. From the deep ocean trenches off Mindanao to the thrusting interior faults of Taiwan and the strike-slip hazards beneath Japan's cities, these events illustrate the dynamic boundaries of the Philippine Sea Plate. As urban populations continue to grow along these fault lines, the challenge for scientists and engineers remains clear, to decode the Earth's restless behavior and ensure history doesn't repeat. The Philippine Sea Plate, then, is not just a passive slab of rock drifting across the planet. It is a dynamic engine of geological change. It is pulled, pushed, and fractured by surrounding plates, its boundaries writhing with subduction zones, fault lines, volcanic arcs, and spreading centers. The landforms of the Philippines, the mountains, trenches, islands, and seas are sculpted by these relentless forces. Beneath the turquoise waters and emerald forests lies a realm of unimaginable energy, one that awakens suddenly in violent tremors, volcanic eruptions, and tsunami waves. To live in this region is to live in constant dialogue with the Earth, a reminder that our planet is not still but alive, breathing and breaking in deep, invisible ways. The magnitude 6.9 earthquake that struck Davao Occidental is more than just a jolt. It's a stark reminder that the Philippine Trench is far from silent. Beneath the calm surface of our seas lies a sleeping giant, shifting and groaning with the weight of tectonic pressure. And every tremor, every shake, could be a warning of something greater to come. As scientists continue to monitor this volatile zone, one thing is clear. We must stay informed prepared and vigilant. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more updates on the forces shaping our world. Stay safe and stay aware.